Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. Holy Matrimony series, and this is week two, so if you missed last week, we were laying the foundation and, and the definition of what holy matrimony is, the difference in just regular marriage and God's best. And if you want to check that out, just go to mylon.org, and uh, you can watch everything we've got anytime you want to. Today we're covering part two, and we call it Love Gives. This is so important because God is love. John 3, 16, I think we all know this one if you've been in church very long or serving God very long. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but would have everlasting life. And it says, For God so loved that He gave. Yes. So giving really is the highest expression of love, even so much more so in a marriage where we're to share the love of God. Amen. Well, the scripture says, as you know, love is the, literally the highest call for a husband before God. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her, the body of Christ, but in our case, our wives, by the washing of water with the word. In other words, as the husband, part of my ministry and job, and my most important before ministering to you and everybody else in the world is to minister to my wife, yes. to constantly share with her what the Word says, and she does the same for me, but it's my job to lead in that, mm -hmm. to wash her heart, her mind, her emotions, her will, mm -hmm. to constantly wash her with the loving, tender, precious Word of God, and you words do that. of life. You know, I want them to know that every day we practice these principles and we don't how do you say it? We don't... Uh... We, we just don't enter into all yeah. the other stuff that's going on. Every morning we get up mm -hmm. and we have our prayer time. We don't yes. get up as early as some people yeah. because I was a musician <laughs> right. and I probably stay up later than some people. That's right. But in the morning we mm -hmm. have our prayer time, we have our word time. We do that separately. Mm -hmm. Christy's got her little fort set up upstairs at our house. I have mm -hmm. one in my study. And then we get together and we share with each other what the Lord's teaching us and what we're learning. And then we pray together. And that's how we start our day. Until we've done that, we don't we answer don't the start. phone. We mm -hmm. don't go to the door. Right. We just don't let the, the rest of the world dictate what our life is like. Yeah, because the good. devil will make sure that you're too busy to have a that's prayer good. time. Good. And you're too busy to minister to your wife or your husband. Mm -hmm. He will, if you let him, the God of this world will become God over your marriage and you'll never have holy matrimony if that happens. Even so, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and carefully protects and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Mm -hmm. Please notice that husbands are to love by giving their lives for their wives as Christ gave his life for us. Love, especially within the marriage covenant, is not a 50-50 thing. It's a hundred percent. I am to give my life for her as Christ gave his life for the church. That means I put her first, not sometimes, 
She's got to know beyond any shadow of a doubt. It's my job to convince her by living. I'm not just trying to buy a, a new motorcycle. It's not my dream to do this or that fishing boat, some hunting rifles or whatever. But whatever dream you have, yeah. wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, that those things come first. Yeah. We take yeah. care of our parents, yeah. we take care of our children. There's all kinds of responsibilities in life. We give to others wherever the Lord tells us to right. and how. That's his business, Amen. how he runs the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But my job is to make sure that Christy knows that she comes before I do. Amen. God is love, and, and love is our perfect example. It's not 50-50. While we were yet sinners, while we were ignoring God and living in sin, going our own way, Christ died for us. He gave 100% while we were yeah. Unable to give anything in return. Yeah. Love gives with no strings attached. You got to hear this. If you're going to have holy matrimony. So good. Yeah. I am not giving to her so that I will get, even though I will get. Mm -hmm. When my wife is happy, come on, people. This is easy to understand. <laughs> right. I mean, when we go to a romantic place, her, one of her dreams was to go to Italy. Oh. Italy was just, an, you know, I was in a rock and roll band. I've been over the world so many times, I really didn't want to go back to Italy. But Christy thought it was romantic. So yes, we went to Italy. Believe me, it was one of my best decisions. <laughs> Glory to God. Was, holy Matt, we're talking about holy Matt now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus gave his life, God gave his son with no strings attached. When we give our lives to Christ, he shed his, his love. Son. Check yeah. this out. Abroad in our hearts, Amen. so that we could share. I right. can give Christy right. the love of God. That's so good. I can Amen. I can love you, even though I've never met you possibly, with the love of God. Before I ever meet you, I can tell you I love you because I live by faith, and I know that if I ever meet you, I will be able to love you because God has put His love yes. in my heart yeah. by the Amen. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise man. God for that. Now, on the other hand, so you do good. get to reap what you sow. The Bible says right. God is not mocked. Whatever men sows, that shall he also reap. So let me say this. The reason I can cheerfully wait in the ladies' shoe department or whatever <laughs> while Christy's shopping, <laughs> it used to just annoy me. I mean, I just get so <laughs> bored. And, and there's some places where women shop that you're the only guy for quite a while, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you get that. But the <laughs> bottom line is, I have learned, I was standing there one day, and I was venting, and I was frustrated, and I was getting, and of course I was doing it to Christy. Are you kidding? You gonna try on another seven pair of shoes? Are you, <laughs> and when you start looking at your watch, you start sewing that. The bottom line is, when we're all, we just did 500 miles in the last two days on a, on a motorcycle. 500 miles, and Christy did not fuss one time. It was 107 degrees the yes. first day. It, it was yeah. hot, man, and it was dry. It was dangerous. It was so hot mm -hmm. coming across that desert. Yeah. But she didn't fuss at all because when I get my attitude right and I realize I'm sewing, I'm standing in the shoe department or the ladies' apparel, wherever it is, apartment, and I get my attitude right, if that's important to her to try on all those clothes and all that stuff. If I get my attitude right, then when we get to go scuba diving or we get to ski <laughs> down mountains or something that's really cool, yeah. exciting to me. Mm -hmm. When she decided to start learning, learning to, cook, to cook, I remember oh <laughs> she didn't really want to. She had been a queer woman and mm -hmm. she liked eating out, but uh, she decided she was watching these cooking shows. She's gonna become a gourmet cook. I told her, I said, baby, I promise you, I will wash the dishes if you decide to do that. That's right. Because I just want you to know I'm mm -hmm. in this thing with you. Amen. Whatever That's you so need, good. I'll do my little part. And uh, and the end result is I get delicious meals. She's such a good cook now, I'd rather have her cooking than any restaurant in the world. <laughs> you do get to reap what you sow, praise God. Praise God. I just want to say thank you for all of the mm -hmm. these areas that you really do you know, I want to testify to you that, again, we live these principles. We're not just yeah. sharing something that we heard someone else say or, or teach or preach. We live this, and He really does do the dishes. Every time I cook, He does the dishes. And every time I go shopping, He's with me. He never fusses. He never complains. We have so much fun together. We play together. We, don't, we do work 
together 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. But we also make sure we take time to play together. We laugh a lot. We're silly. Watch funny movies. Cartoons. You know, <laughs> you know he, he dances with me in the grocery uh, grocery store aisles. He'll dance and sing to, with, sing to me down the aisle. We're silly. We Too have lots of <laughs> They need to know that we're, romance is important and having mm-hmm. fun together is essential yes. to holy matrimony. And he really does wash me in the water of the word. He does not let me leave the house without taking time to pray with me. He'll stop me, make sure we've prayed together. He prays over my day. And then he always looks me in the eye and tells me how much he loves me every day. And those words of life, they minister so mightily to me in the areas that he knows that I may not be as confident in. He constantly encourages me. He constantly builds me up. And I just want to thank you for that, for being such a a godly man and a wonderful husband. It is such a gift from God that I do not take lightly. It is a privilege to be married to you. You you are a gift and I'm honored that the Lord would trust me with you. Well, I'm honored, my darling. I've never known anybody that I look up to more. My wife's never, ever deceived me. 20 years, it has not happened one time. We have an amazing Christ-like relationship and I just adore her. And, and if I haven't told you lately, I don't mind telling you in front of everybody, I'm so in love with you, baby, and I'm so thankful for oh, you. Thank you. And it's easy to be good to you because you're a good woman. Now, let me say this, husbands. I remember when I was praying for a wife and I was single, I made a petition to the Lord. And, you know, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. I had just been through a divorce. I was financially wrecked. I had... I had made some money in rock and roll, but it was all gone. I was left with a big house that I owned, owed a lot of money on, and no, all the furniture went to Tennessee one day while I was preaching in Phoenix, and so did the bank account. And I came home, there was nobody to pick me up at the airport. The whole world came crashing down. I went home, and it was like a ghost town, all the pictures of my child, and, and the last 30 years of marriage were gone. and. And uh, I didn't know what to do, man. I didn't know. I, I wrote God a petition. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, make your petitions known unto God yes. with prayer and thanksgiving, supplication. And basically, God said, I'll do it. If you worship me, you thank me, you expect me to do that, I will do that. So I didn't know how to make a petition to God, but I made a, I wrote him a letter, two-page letter. And I, I found some promises over in Proverbs 31 about a godly woman. There was something else about the daughters of Sarah and what a sweet attitude they had. She was intelligent. She was beautiful. She was industrious. She did this, that, and the description of this magnificent woman. And I started praying. And, and, and there was another place where God said it wasn't good for man to be alone. God said it's not good. And he said, so I'm going to create you a helpmate. And of course, I'm her helpmate and she's mine. But at that time, I didn't know who or what that was, but I was praying for a godly wife. And I made this petition, I'd tell God every day, Lord, it's not good for me to be alone. I know I need help. And you said it, so I, I'm saying it. And Lord, I'm looking to you and you alone. I'm not gonna be out just dating on some, you know, I'm not gonna get on the internet and try to meet people. I'm gonna go to the house of God and I'm gonna worship you and seek you. And I'm gonna believe that you're gonna overtake me with your blessings. That's what he said he would do if I would simply do things his way. So here's what he told me though. He said, I'm gonna give you, he he said to me one day, and when I say that God spoke to me, I'm not saying I heard an audible voice. I've never done that. I'm saying that the spirit of God impressed upon my spirit and I believe that I've heard this voice so many times. This is the way he leads me every day. He reminds me what his word says. Sometimes he actually speaks to me in such a way that I know the difference in, uh, if you talk to somebody a thousand times, you get to where when they call your house, you know who it is. You don't have to say who is this. You recognize the voice. And the spirit of the Lord said to me, son, you're asking me for the best I got. You're asking me for my the best daughter I got and, and I it sort of shocked me because I'd been praying for six or eight months about this and and I said yes sir you know he, it seemed like he hadn't spoken to me about it he just listened and, and watched me praise him and thank him for it every day he said you're asking for the best I got and then he said this he said I'm going to give her to you son but he said 
And, and I'm going to let you call her your wife, but I want you to remember that she's my daughter. And I have a daughter, so I understand. I know how I felt when she was getting married. I wanted my son-in-law to be good to her, and if he is, then I'll be good to him. If he, was, if he hurt her, then I would not have the same relationship and not enjoy blessing him the way I want to. God wants you to remember, husbands, that your wife is his daughter, and he's always watching over his daughter. Yeah. And the way we treat his daughter will determine how much he can trust us with the things that we're asking him for. Well, if On the Road to Freedom has been a blessing to you, would you consider helping us to reach others with the good news of the gospel that God wants to set them free and free indeed? You know, every time that you give to the work of the kingdom, you receive eternal reward. Yes. You share in the same reward yes. with us for every life that is touched, every person that is delivered, every family that's restored, every person set free, you share in that reward for all of eternity. So I encourage you today, if you'd like to be a part, just go to Mylon, M-Y-L-O-N.org and join Team Mylon. And we will join mm -hmm. our faith with you that yes. your seed will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold return Amen. in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, yes. and for you personally. God bless you. So we need to honor our wives. First Peter 3 and 7 says, In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wives with understanding as you live together. She may be physically weaker or smaller than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Yeah. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. If we don't love our wives the way God instructed us to, it'll hinder our prayers because love is what causes our faith to work. Right. I love this because this living with understanding of your wife, you know, this is something, again, that I really honor you for, honey. From the beginning, you have lived with understanding of Christy, <laughs> <laughs> of all my quirks and my uniqueness and my weaknesses and strengths. And uh, what I mean by that is that, you know, one of the things I said when we first got married that is a joke now between us, but I would be having a difficult day and I would tell him, well, you know, chocolate chip cookies make everything better. <laughs> so when he figured that out, there were little things that that I enjoy in life that are just simple things like chocolate chip cookies or some pretty pajamas or a pretty pair of shoes. And if he sees that I'm really struggling, first he always gives me the word. He always encourages me and reminds me this is what we need to do now. And we say we. We, we don't, remind we each remind other not to other. allow our emotions right. to, to cause us to overreact. Simple yes, stuff simple you know, that we all do, that everybody does. We all need help. When, because you know. we help each other concerning concerning being obedient to the Word. We hold each other accountable yes, to the Word do. of God. We should always speak the truth in love. Yeah. So He always delivers the truth to me of Christy. You know, don't get emotional. Don't get too upset. And then after we've spent time praying over that and taking it to the Lord in prayer, releasing it, if we need to forgive, we forgive. Then He'll look at me and say, well, you know what? Maybe it's time to go get some chocolate chip cookies or, <laughs> you know, and, but that's Him living with understanding of me. And so I'm just encouraging you husbands to really get to know those areas of your, of your wife's life, those specific areas that you can encourage her in. Um, and it will really be a blessing to her. There's a lot of people watching today and your marriage is at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could go either way. And the devil has obviously been setting you up and for the perfect storm, he's trying to get you so annoyed at each other right, to get yeah. the respect level so low and the lack of honor 
And if he can take your dignity away, if he can get you so offended at each other and you won't forgive each other, then you don't have a chance. It's just a matter of time. You take it out on each other every day, your frustrations and all that. But the key to starting over is forgiveness. And if you're a Christian, then your whole goal is to be like Jesus. Well, what's he like? What's God like? He's full of mercy and his mercy is fresh every day. So if Christy did something that annoyed me a month ago, Mm -hmm. that was a month ago. Put it under the blood of Jesus, put it in the past. Jesus said, forget the past. If you keep dragging the past into the future, the future is gonna be just like the past or worse. Mm -hmm. But he said, if we forgive each other, then we get to start over every day. Now, you know, we're up here talking about holy matrimony and we really do have it, it's real. But don't think we don't ever holler at each other. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to pretend we're some Holy Joe character, we're just people. But the future of your life and marriage and family could go either way, but remember, you get to choose which way it goes. This is not luck. There's no such thing in the kingdom of God. When you do what the Bible says and you forgive and you have mercy Mm -hmm. and you what? You pray. In other words, I'm supposed to pray for her that she will have what she wants, not that she'll have what I want. I am not supposed to dominate her. I'm supposed to lead her. I'm not supposed to control her. I'm supposed to encourage her and build her up. And I'm supposed to create a safe, warm place where she can blossom and bloom and be like Jesus. And what does that mean? He's making her in the image, his own image, not my image that I have in mind. I'm not trying to make her the perfect wife. When I married her, she was the perfect wife. I asked God for the perfect wife and he gave her to me. That deal was settled the moment that I said I do. Mm. That thing was settled forever. I entered covenant before God. I am not coming out of that ever. And she isn't either. We've never, ever threatened a divorce. We've had rough times and we've had fusses and, and, there, and, and it got bad at times. And we've hollered and all this and had to repent. You know, when you lose your temper, you just say stupid stuff. And early on in our marriage, we were at a crossroads too. And sure. it could have gone either direction sure. depending on what we chose. And we both chose the word. Yeah. We both chose the mm-hmm. kingdom of God yes. first Amen. and His righteousness. Amen. And that's all you got to do. That's right. You, you, you choose the word, you let God have His way, and you will have your breakthrough today. Yes. Yes. There's no reason why you can't. Satan is defeated by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we've been sitting here for five minutes testifying. testifying. <laughs> we have seen it happen. It's magnificent. Yes. You're going to love it. Thanks for sharing with us your time today. Thanks for letting us come into your life and share Jesus. We sure do love you guys, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, stay on On the the road road to freedom. freedom. We've been shooting outside here all day, and as you can see, the sun's gone down. It was really warm when we came out here this morning. We were just sitting out here in sweaters and shirts and and having a good time teaching the Word. We've done about 12, 15 shows in the last couple of days and done some skiing and some playing and lots of laughing and and eating together and fellowshipping and praying. But man, at the end of the day here, look at this view. Can you think of a better place to have your life changed? I thought it'd be a really silly thing to do all this teaching and do all these shows and and not give anybody a chance to make a decision for Christ. I don't know what's going on in your life, man, but I know that I was sitting on the other side of this camera years ago and I was by myself, man. I'd sit in those hotel rooms. I was in a rock and roll band and I'd come up after the gig. I was really stoned and it was late at night and I'd flip the TV on and and I was lonely. I mean, it was amazing. I'd be in some stadium and there'd be 20 or 30,000 people in there and they're all flicking their bick and and they're holding their flames up and giving you a standing ovation. And then you get in the limo and all of a sudden you're in some penthouse suite overlooking the city and maybe it costs $2,000 a day. And you'd re- it'd be really cool to, to show all the guys you grew up with in the, in the trailer park. 
you know where you are, but you don't know where any of them are. And all the friends that were your friends a while ago, they're all gone all over town. And you're in this big old room by yourself, overlooking the city. And I'd turn on the TV and I'd, I'd watch some Christian TV and I couldn't figure out what was going on with these people. A lot of times they'd be crying. They'd be talking about stuff that I just couldn't relate to. And I didn't know, man. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I know that at one point I kept being drawn. I knew there's something holy going on in these people's life. And even though I couldn't relate to all of it, and you might not can relate to me, but if you can, I'm telling you there is a God and he's in love with you. And he loves you so much, he sent his only begotten son. And if you would just simply believe on him and then let people know, that's all the Bible says you have to do to be born again. Believe that, that God loves you enough to send Jesus and accept Jesus as your savior and as your Lord and master. If you do that, all you have to do is tell people you did that and you are born again. And whether you understand that or not, whether you intellectually comprehend what that means or not, it'll still happen. God Almighty who created the universe and who created you will come into you by His Spirit and He will start recreating everything in your life, the way you view life, the way you enjoy life, the way you spend your time, the way you treat others. Your life will get better every day as mine has been for these last uh, 38 years since I got born again. Will you let me pray with you? If you don't mind, I just want to lead you in a prayer right quick and it will change your life. Say this with me. Father God, I believe in Jesus and I receive your son as my Lord and Savior. God, you know I've sinned and I'm asking you to forgive me and let me start my life over again. I believe that you are real and by the grace of God, I'm going to start serving you. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now go tell anybody the decision you just made, whoever you trust. If it's your mama, your sister, your wife, your husband, your child, or your best friend, just tell somebody that you prayed and asked God for a chance to start over, and he gave it to you because he did. Praise God, you're a new creature. I'll see you in heaven someday. How awesome is that? God bless you. I'm going to be praying for you. If there's anything we can do at mylon.org, www.mylon.org, I'm doing everything I can all day, every day to make getting from here to heaven as easy as possible. Check it out. Check out the videos. Check out. And if you think we can do a TV show about something, that if you're already born again and you got an idea, you want us to teach on something, send us the information. Let us know what you want to know about. We'll study it up in the Word and we'll do a show on it if we can. We'll do everything we can to be a blessing to you and to the body of Christ because God loves you and we do too. God bless you, man. I'll see you on the road to freedom.